All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Senior Tech Coffee. I'm really pleased that you could be here today, and thank you so much for joining. And if you're watching on the replay on YouTube, thank you for watching. Um, today, we're going to be talking about Google My Business with my special guest, Susan Mann. Um, Susan, welcome. I appreciate you being here today. And um, just a quick introduction about me. And then we're going to uh, get right into Susan and uh, the topic at hand, which is Google My Business. Um, I'm Patrick Baker again uh, with Prime of Life Tech, and I provide uh, all the services that you see listed here. And I'd be happy to help you with your uh, computers, mobile devices, and other technology. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. And Susan, um, welcome again. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for having me. And I am super excited uh, to be presenting this very important topic. Uh, so before I share my screen, and I know that we are all uh, not running our video right now, but if uh, any of you just want to put in the chat, so my first question, and maybe we should reveal ourselves. What the heck? I'm all about transparency, and we're going to do a lot of transparency today. Uh, and then after I ask my questions, if you feel more comfortable uh, turning your videos off, that's super. How many consumers do we have in the group today? OK, that's a trick question. <laughs> we are all consumers, right? And we all do, I'm going to, this is a bold statement, but I'm going to make it. We all do the following, and I apologize in advance if I'm waking up anything. Hey, Google, best plumber near me. Hey, Google, best pizza open tonight. We all do the thing, right? I mean, yeah, some of us do this thing, but we are all utilizing Google My Business. You may not realize that that's what's happening, but that is what's happening. All right. Videos on and with a show of hands, um, how many of you are business owners with a brick and mortar business that your address is not hidden on Google My Business? All right, I'm going to have to get creative. Uh, <laughs> and the reason is during, we're going to have a couple of live demo sessions. And uh, I wanted to see how many wonderful, perhaps volunteering folks we had. All right, super. You can turn that all off and I will get right into it. So I did have a couple of questions for you, um, you right betcha. off the bat. Um, and first off, if there's like a, if you wanted a brick and mortar business, um, as an example, um, would you like me to suggest one or do you have one that you I, already I have one, but thank okay, you. Okay, perfect. Appreciate Great. it. Um, so just real quick, um, tell us a little bit about your background and, um, and, and who you work for and, and how you arrived there. Uh, how I arrived there is a very interesting journey. Uh, so um, a little bit about me. I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, in my younger years, I practiced law uh, in Pittsburgh, particularly asbestos defense. Uh, then uh, later, a, a career in retail and wholesale mortgage lending. The last 11 uh, years in that particular uh, business was in wholesale subprime mortgage lending until 2008. So yes, mm. I was one of the crack dealers. Uh, <laughs> then um, migrated to uh, the wholesale tea business. Uh, then uh, insurance, particularly with Aflac, because who doesn't love a duck? And uh, through that journey, I ended up um, meeting with the founders of Encompass TV, and that was, gosh, 13 years ago. Um, and uh, Encompass TV, at the heart of the business, is an indoor billboard business to feature local businesses. We also have entrepreneurs all over the country who have our system and uh, 
based out of Denver. I not only am associated with the corporate entity, but I also represent uh, a corporate network here in Denver and Compass TV Colorado. And while I have a um, little side hustle with social media that I've had in the last 10 years, a year ago when COVID happened, um, Encompass realized it was important for our entrepreneurs to be able to offer something and digital marketing services is something that was rolled out then. And uh, during the last year, um, I have really made it my mission to share Google My Business with everyone that I know, every business owner that I know, because it is so vital to be found locally. And this is the tool to learn how to use. I don't know if you can see my hair, but I refer to it as the redheaded stepchild of an online presence. And uh, I'm on a mission. Very good. Well, I know that I had not um, utilized um, frankly, even heard of Google My Business, or I'd heard of it, but didn't really know anything about it until um, I met you at, um, at actually at Joyce's uh, meetup where you presented, I think, last year. So um, I just wanted to mention really quick, there were a couple of suggestions in the chat for brick and mortar businesses by folks who are in attendance. So, um, so you can use those as you see fit. Okay. And uh, thanks for that. And Either of you would like to put in your address. Now, this is the tricky part. As it appears on Google My Business, exactly your name and the exact address as it appears on Google My Business. When we talk about another ancillary topic later on, uh, I'll thanks for volunteering. Uh, I will be using your business as a guinea pig. Cool. All right, so uh, Patrick, can everyone see my screen? And if so, we'll get started. Yep. Great. All right, so um, as I demonstrated a little earlier, this is how businesses are found. Uh, we're all looking for things. Um, we're not quite back to roaming the streets uh, and Google My Business is everything. So. For, some, for those of you who don't know, because I know it's a particular term of art, but Google my, uh, great. <laughs> you gotta love technology if you make one false, false, false move and bam. Um, Google my business is actually tied to Google Maps. So it's the thing that comes up um, when you are looking for something and it doesn't matter if it's mobile or on a desktop. Um, although Google does have metrics to differentiate the two, um, but it will provide a lot of information to you as a consumer. Um, it, it'll offer up a website, it'll offer up hours if the business is busy and what those peak hours are, sometimes products and services. And there are, um, when we start talking about utilizing uh, Google My Business, really it's to help consumers connect with you. That is the most important part of knowing about what Google My Business is. Google My Business is for brick and mortar businesses. And if uh, you have a franchise or if you have a multi-location business, Unlike Facebook, where you can have a parent-child relationship and manage everything from one place, every business location, every footprint should have its own unique Google My Business listing. It's totally okay if you don't want to share your address publicly. Many of us work from home now. And so you can be what's called a service-based business. And, you know, for example, a plumber, uh, maybe the plumber works out of his or her home and um, they don't want people showing up there. So you can be a service-based business, hide your address. Patrick has his address, his, his as well. And we'll, we'll be looking at his Google My Business page a little later. Um, here is what you 
cannot do, and then I'll share with you what you should not do. So if you are a 100% e-commerce business with no local footprint, meaning people can't come to your place of business to purchase something or do something, um, let's say you make baskets and you're on Etsy and that's it. Google My Business is not for you. Um, there are folks who choose not to reveal their address, but they do want an address showing. And folks have gotten crafty with using uh, WeWork or some sort of work shared space or a post office or uh, USPS box, things like that. Google is cracking down on those types of things. So while it was successful for a short period of time, it no longer is. And you will go down a very painful rabbit hole of trying to verify. And the only way Google is verifying now is with a postcard. It's the most annoying thing. And so welcome to your wait of five days. And that's if you get it. Um, it used to be a text, not so much anymore. So um, verifying your business is an important part of the process, but you have to fit into the proper slots for Google. And the other interesting thing I will uh, share at the outset is that there is a lot of mystery around this. And what I mean by that is when Google does things, there's no like media blast. There's no PR campaign. It's very kind of secret. And uh, those who are in the business, who, who analyze Google's every move, there's always some crazy change, uh, it, whether it's in Google's algorithm for search engine optimization or, or even with Google My Business. And the only way you find out about it is if experts to analyze these things start talking about it because they noticed a trend or a pattern. So enough about that. All right, so why should a business care about Google My Business? Like, okay, we learned it's how we, we look for things, it's how we do things, but here's the truth and the numbers don't lie. There are 2.2 billion Google searches on any given day. And by the way, Google My Business is not just for US-based businesses. It is a global situation. Um, I think of these stats, um, the things that really surprise me the very most, uh, and I want to say that a 500% increase for near me searches, that's been a thing in the last year, but a 900% increase in near me today or near me tonight, getting super granular about a time frame, I thought was really interesting. Um, this is a new stat to me. Actually, the, the next two stats, 89% of consumers evaluate how a company responds to online reviews before making a purchasing decision. And 88% of consumers trust online reviews as much as personal recommendations. So up until a couple of days ago, I, would, I have always framed Google My Business as secondarily a validation tool to a word of mouth referral you got from your good friend, like, oh my goodness, this pizza is the bomb diggity. You have to check it out. Well, 88% of consumers trust online reviews. So I'm not sure what that says about personal recommendations anymore or the importance of uh, an online review. Um, and we'll talk about this in just a few moments, but there are very few business owners responding to the reviews. So um, business owners here, you may want to think about that because it, <laughs> it's really important. Um, and uh, also, um, there's this new revolution that is like uh, clickless doing business, meaning maybe people don't even go to your website anymore. I was listening to to a Google My Business analyst uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, who was talking about the fact that 
because of the importance and the relevance of Google My Business, people leave, aren't even going to websites to validate anymore, except for maybe ours. That's it. It's all the business is being done here. So that's why a business should care. All right, let's look at another uh, metric for why a business should care. So this is in the context of, uh, I, I rarely say this, but I'm gonna say it today, local SEO. So whenever we hear the term SEO, it stands for search engine optimization. And most of us associate that with something we've heard about our website and some magic secret sauce that very hard to get the algorithm down like, oh, I should have, I don't know, 5,000 backlinks. Like it's just, that's crazy. That's a topic not for me and definitely for another day. But um, in terms of, I like to call this competition management, frankly, although technically it's local SEO. Um, I call it competition management because what business owner doesn't want to uh, crush the competition? Um, the, the promised land, the holy land is the three pack. It's when, when you're looking for something and Google reveals something, there are the top three. And then you have to dig a little deeper to find more. So Google... 5% of the local competition landscape. Citations are 11%. Uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit today as well. So that is a big third of the pie. Links and on page uh, are at the bottom there. Reviews 15%. Social um, is not as important as you might think it is, but I, I say that uh, with a little caution because I think there are businesses that are extremely visual that they have tremendous impact on Instagram with that Instagram worthy pose and you know if it, food clothing beauty there are a lot of things that are very visual and that's where they have their traction all right so things you probably didn't know if you are not on page one of Google, you are a ghost. And I hate to say that, but most of us consumers, because we all raised our hands, we're all consumers. Um, we're kind of lazy. We don't go to page four or page 10 on a Google search unless we're going down the rabbit hole of something crazy and you're making yourself crazy because you haven't put the right keywords into your search to, for Google to deliver exactly what you want. And we're going to talk about keywords uh, also and what the heck that is. So the other uh, thing to think about is Google My Business is not set it and forget it. I'm going to say that one more time because it's so important. Google My Business is not set it and forget it. You must feed the beast every month. The more you interface with this particular tool on Google, Google My Business, the more Google will trust your business and serve it up higher in the search results. And we are going to go over the anatomy of a Google My Business page and you will see all of the ways that you can interface. Um, what I noticed, and, and there's a, a pattern with most business owners, like somehow along the way, people do claim their page and they put in their hours and maybe there's a logo or maybe one picture when they, start a business or maybe purchase a business. And then I noticed over the last year, particularly March of April of last year, business owners were like, crap, uh, we need to do something to be relevant, whether we're open or not. Uh, we're going to start working on our business instead of in our business because most of us can't right now. So I would see a little activity uh, about a year ago. Um, and, and we'll, we'll learn more about that. And, and the other thing that I want to share with you business owners here, don't feel bad 
that you, this is all new information to you, or maybe mostly new information. It's something that's not part of entrepreneur boot camp. It's just this little hidden gem that is truly the most important thing to be found locally. All right, so the anatomy of a Google My Business listing. There are certain um, key things that you will want to put in, your name, your phone, your address, your website, your hours. Um, don't be fooled because there is a place for you to actually create a Google site. Uh, but if you already have a fully functioning website, then that's what you should put. Um, categories are super important to pick the right one or ones because there are subcategories as well. Uh, you'll want to list your services. And this one's always sort of well, a lot of these are kind of neglected. Um, your service area. And uh, because uh, I'm presenting in the Denver area today, um, you just don't want to put Denver. You want to put all of the neighborhoods, all of the cities, all of the towns that you want to be found in, where you want Google to serve you up. Um, there's an area for description. Um, I often see this left out. And uh, now we'll talk about that term that I mentioned earlier, keywords. What are keywords? And without going into, you know, again, that's a session for another time as well, but a shortcut for now. Keywords are important words that consumers, they have traction in search engine optimization. And there are words that consumers look for when they're hunting for a product or a service. They are not words that maybe you as a business owner might use. And, and here's an example. Let's say for fun, I'm a financial planner. And in my description, I use things like helping you plan for the future of financial freedom and enjoying the lifestyle you've always wanted to live. All right. Do you think honestly a consumer's going to go vacation of my dreams, financial planning? No, it's going to be um, financial planner, 401k, IRA, things that uh, products and services versus fluffy fluff. So use your consumer brain because we're all consumers. How would you look for something? There's actually uh, there's an art form to studying this. There are many online tools to study this, but for now, just think of words. And some of them, while super subtle, could be really important and you might wanna use both. Like let's say car insurance, auto insurance. It feels like they're exactly the same, right? They're not. And if you happen to be in the property and casualty insurance industry, you will want to use both. Um, we'll learn a little bit more about description, but the other thing about description that very few people know, except for Patrick Baker and probably Joyce, is that um, you will also want to put the geographic areas. This should be written in good English, but honestly, you're talking to Google's algorithm. All of these things are talking to Google's algorithm. So uh, proudly serving the Denver metro area, including Highlands, Ken Carroll, the Tech Center, Cherry Creek, whatever. So you're training Google where to serve you up on a local search. Uh, photos, okay, we're going to come back to that. Uh, that's going to be our jazz hands moment. Um, you'll see why I, I am so excited about the photo section reviews. We've already learned why that's important posting, um, and Q and a Q and a, and we'll look at a live page now, but Q and a is probably the most underutilized area. And I'll explain why. So, um, Patrick has graciously, uh, given me permission to, uh, do an evaluation of his Google My Business page. And um, it he's done a very fine job. Um, there are also areas of improvement, which we will learn about today. 
Um, and I'm always delighted to do an assessment of uh, someone's Google My Business page, and we'll talk about ways to connect later. All right. So I kind of like to eat dessert first. So I always scroll to the bottom uh, and, and work my way up to see what's happening. So this section right here, and it, it's got a couple images and I'm just gonna hit the arrow. This is the posting section. Um, and there used to be a creature called Google Plus where when Google thought, hey, let's take on Facebook. And somehow it never really got the traction I think Google was hoping for. So I think that Google Plus sort of ended up here in the posting section. And the purpose of this Again, it's one of those pieces of the puzzle to talk to Google's algorithm. So Google will trust you and serve you up higher in the search results. So these are posts. Posts last for seven days, although you can post as many times as you want to. Um, so posts last for seven days and then they just kind of go behind the fold. Um, unless you're having an event and you can do an event post and that will last for the uh, term of the event. But the idea here is people really don't see this. It's really to talk to Google's algorithm. So what you want to do is keyword stuff the heck out of whatever your description is and train Google by using linking to there are several call to action buttons of wherever you want people to go, however you want people to connect with you. And so I highly recommend using those as well, but posting again, keyword stuff, almost really doesn't matter what the picture is, should be relevant to your business, should be authentic. Um, you don't know, like Patrick probably would not put a picture of a pink flamingo because <laughs> it's not relevant to his business. All right. So moving on up, there's this description that we talked about. And Patrick has done a magnificent job of keyword stuffing any and every service that he provides. And woo woo, look at this beautiful display of geographic area to tell Google where to serve up Patrick's business locally. All right, so again, moving on up, we'll, we'll get to reviews in just a moment because I'll go up here. So questions and answers. This has been around since 2016 and it is a way, and it's so funny because some consumers think they are interfacing directly it's like a chat or a message. Some consumers think if they ask something that only the business owner will see it and respond, but it's actually a little more crowdsourcing and community-based. And you will see people asking questions and you will see other people on Google answering them, probably mostly because the business owner didn't. And actually, if you're looking for something specific, you can start typing and Google will autofill. So here's a nifty little tip and trick for today that business owners, you should seed your questions and answers like an FAQ and keyword stuff everything. And what's kind of nifty about the question and answer section is that Google masks or hides the question asker. You cannot see who is asking the question. You can only see who is answering the question. So if you have a full on FAQ with 40 questions, whether it's how safe you are during COVID and what steps you're taking, uh, for cleanliness or whether it has to do with your product or service, whether it's, you know, a brand new question or something timely in your field, I highly recommend asking and answering your own questions with keywords so that 
you're utilizing this particular part of Google My Business. All right, um, I'm going to go to reviews. Reviews are a big deal. And congratulations to Patrick for all five stars. Um, one thing I do want to say is that the more reviews you have, the more Google will trust and serve up your business. And I know that many of us think we do a wonderful job for our clients and we're kind of shy about asking for the review. And um, I would suggest to you, do not be shy. Um, there's actually in your Google My Business dashboard, a link that you can provide people and you can do it through all of the ways, whether it's an invoice, whether it's a follow-up email, however you communicate with your people, that's when you should do it, especially when they've had an amazing experience with you, uh, your product service, whatever that is, you saved the day, you were the superhero. That's the time when people are willing to extol your virtues very publicly if they're prone to do that. So ask, please ask. And when you ask and when they write something, you should respond immediately. Uh, you will be notified. And if you don't, business owners, if you don't have the Google My Business app on your phone, I highly recommend it because you'll, somebody writes something, you'll, you can get right on it. Um, I also am going to share with you another tip. Not only should you respond, but wait for it, shocker, keyword stuff your response. So Patrick is wonderful. Uh, he, he's responding to each and every one. And so I would, let's up the ante one level higher and keyword stuff your responses. So instead of Tammy saying, you know, th your response, thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Tammy. It was a pleasure to help you set up your scanner on your Windows device. It was a pleasure to educate you on Zoom. It was a pleasure to blah, blah, blah. And of course, you know, you're in the driver's seat. You know what service you. Some people just go, you know, it was great. And if you're a restaurant serving thousands of people, <laughs> I don't think you're going to go back through your POS system and go, so glad you enjoyed our amazing, our best Reuben sandwich. Um, so anyway, I would say up the ante just a little further with the responses, but great job. And, and um, excuse me, excuse yeah. the interruption. Can I go back and edit my responses? You or is can. It a one, is it one and done? Okay. You can. Cool. Cool. Um, the other thing that I am looking for is to see if you have any local guides responding. So local guides, um, it's a badge that you can ask for on Google when you set up a Gmail account. Um, and Google will anoint those who like to do reviews and lots of them. Um, with a little badge, it's a little star, and right next to your name when you're writing a review or reading someone's review, it will say local guide. Local guides are weighted more heavily by Google because they're utilizing Google's tools, and Google trusts them because they're utilizing Google's tools. It, it doesn't matter like if they're always one star or they're not. By the way, speaking of one star, well, well I'll finish that thought. Um, so it's very important to respond to local guides reviews. It's, re it's re important to respond to everyone's reviews. Okay, just one more point about reviews and that is, well, what if you get a one star? What, what do you do about it? So um, it could be someone is a troll. And what I mean by that is they kind of have no lives. They will just randomly trash people's businesses because well, I don't know, it's Wednesday. Um, when I see that kind of activity that's so random and as a business owner, I don't know who they are. Um, the first thing I do is 
I, you can just by clicking on them, see other reviews that they've done. And in one case, I saw an individual who was reviewing businesses in four different states in one day, not possible to do that because with Seattle and Connecticut and Georgia, and I'm, I'm kind of snarky. And so, and, and people like a giggle, they like to be entertained and they also, their BS radars are usually always out and open and listening. So personally, if I saw somebody doing that, I would say, hi, John, sorry you woke up on the wrong side of the bed today. I saw you also gave a one-star review to X, Y, and Z in four states on the same day. I hope tomorrow's a better day. All right, so that's just one crazy example. But what if someone really did have a horrible experience? So I, business owners, we know who our customers are. Yes, even in a busy restaurant environment, you can look up your customer on your POS system. And honest to goodness, I would reach out that personal touch. Like normally what we see is so sorry you had a bad experience. Please reach out to us directly and we will make it right. And that is perfectly appropriate. It's wonderful. But I suggest go to the next level. Pick up the phone. Communicate with your client and say, so sorry this happened happened, want an opportunity to fix it. And when the problem has been rectified, ask, would you mind updating your Google review? Uh, hopefully you are satisfied with the outcome. Um, and if they don't, then go ahead as the business owner and say, uh, we reached out to blah, blah, blah for this unfortunate experience and we have made it right. And that way, again, we learned the importance of reviews earlier. Your people will see, hey, the business owner really cares. They're doing something. They're not MIA as we see uh, many business owners are. Just randomly Google things and look for reviews. You'll be surprised. All right, now we're gonna get to the jazz hands moment. Ah! And that is the photograph section. Why am I so crazy about the photos? Well, I'm going to show you. There is a direct relationship between the number of images you have uploaded into your media gallery on Google My Business and Google's willingness to trust your business and serve you up. So what this chart is showing us a direct search that the green bars are when we look for a business exactly by name. And the discovery search are those keywords like pizza near me, the things that we use as consumers to find things. And there is a relationship between the number of images and being found. And we'll just look at the last one. When you have over a hundred images in your Google My Business account, uh, and a discovery search, it is absolutely astronomical um, how much Google will trust and serve up your business. So we're going to look at Patrick's photos and I will share something with you. So when I am auditing an account, I look for two tabs. One is the buy owner tab. That's the owner has uploaded images into their Google My Business account. The other is the latest tab. That is uh, anything that's happened within the last three weeks or so. And when consumers do reviews, sometimes they will uh, associate an image with their review. It ends up here as well, either under latest if it's recent or under all. And depending on the type of business, Google will also add other columns like vibe, menu, 360, all kinds of other things. So um, we're going to look at uh, images that Patrick has uploaded. And you can actually see who has uploaded it and the date. So we've got March, September, November, 
March, 2020, September, December. Hi, Patrick. March, December, October. And it's really okay that these are all the same. We're just talking to Google's algorithm. It's all good. So um, great start. I want to encourage you to now have, uh, we saw the graphic that said 100 images. Please don't upload 100 images in one sitting. Google will flag your account for suspicious activity. We have found between posts and um, images to this gallery here, 20 a month is a good sweet spot. So don't go, I'm gonna do it all right now. Um, all right. So that is really the essential parts of uh, the anatomy of a Google My Business page and um, optimizing and uh, having a continuing dialogue with your Google My Business um, listing will be very helpful for you to be found in the search results. All right, so there's one last element that we really should talk about today. And this is probably like a deeper, darker secret. And that is something, and I don't know if we remember that 11% of the pie chart for local SEO, but it's called local citations. And there are what a local citation is derived from. There are these name, address, phone directories, their URLs that are online. And Google utilizes these as part of its algorithm, as part of the play with Google's tools. Google, Google will reward you as part of the algorithm to serve up your business. I didn't know really anything about this until a year ago, but there are weird sites like Tupelo, N49, Hot Frog, Where's It, things that you and I have never heard of. Um, Facebook and Google Maps, which is Google My Business and Foursquare. We probably heard of those, especially if you dabbled in social a while ago, mm -hmm. you could like be the mayor of a place at Foursquare. Nah, not so relevant anymore, but um, these are strange websites that Google is utilizing. So what I would love to do, and I'm going to go to the chat box and see if any of uh, our brave folks and I see um, Orion Mortgage. So we're gonna use that. The other thing that I need is also a phone number. So Amanda, if you would be kind enough in the chat to put in your phone number, that, thank you so much. And I'm assuming that is the phone number that's listed on Google My Business. And the name matches exactly and all of that good stuff. I'm hoping, yes, the answer was yes. All right, so I have a nifty little scan tool and I am going to put in the, oh, it says be kind. I'm not the owner, but I manage the page. I'm always kind. And honestly, what we're, well, I try and be. I have a qualification <laughs> when I wanna be. Anyway, um, this particular search that I'm doing is very specific to local citations. Um, so, um, I typically see an error rate of 60 to 100%. And so please don't, uh, feel offended or, um, it's, it just is what it is. So don't feel bad. I'm kind, but the scan tool may not be all right. Well, copying and pasting from the chat isn't so great either. So I'm just going to dump a whole bunch of things in and then clean it up. Patrick, if you want to talk while I'm doing this, that would be great too. Sure thing. Yeah, just uh, just a heads up. We're uh, about we have about ten minutes left in the hour, so. and I'm going to be wrapping up in about five. So we're all good. But thank you so much cool. for the heads absolutely. Up. And folks, if you have any questions, 
uh, basically, once we get through this part, feel free to unmute, turn your cameras back on, and and uh, we'll we'll uh, stop the screen share, and we can take any questions that you have. All right, and I'll grab this. Zip one. is actually eight zero zero three one. Thank you. Oh nope, sorry, never mind. I'm looking at the other gals. No wonder that sounded so weird to me. You're good. Never mind. <laughs> All right, um, Amanda, did I get this all right? Except for missing Colorado. Am I good? Yeah, looks good. All right. Dun, 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 dun. All right, again, don't feel bad if the error rate's high. It's, it happens. It happens. So um, here's what happens. Either the address isn't exactly matchy matcherton or it's missing. And in this case, it's a pretty simple address. If we had like a south or a north or a sweet number or you know a number sign, that's when things get a little tricky. Um, and here's an example. So oh, we, this probably was maybe a former address, but in many cases, the listing is missing. So um, it's, it's just part of the algorithm of being found. And uh, to that, um, we at Encompass uh, do specialize in this lane. So a little more education. Um, whenever we take images, there's this crazy data that's on the backside of an image called EXIF that you and I, we don't even know it's there, but it's a lot of gobbledygook, including the timestamp of the image, when, uh, what device that image was taken on and with location services on, um, the latitude and longitude. So as part of our professional services, we strip out that metadata, we stuff keywords into the back of the image. We also change the latitude and longitude to reflect the service area of where you want to be found, as well as your website, your phone number, things like that. And this is an example of things that we do. So this is a, a pho restaurant, it's in Broomfield. They were ranking really well for noodles and pho and Vietnamese, but not so much for the search term vegan restaurant. And 13 is actually, I don't know if you can see that, but in the center here is their physical location. And what these numbers represent, they're ranking on Google. So page one is one through 10, page two is 11 through 20, and then you're really in no man's land. So um, here we're on page two where X is, is not ranking at all, or maybe past page two. And that was at the end of May. So. Um, in July and October, you can see getting or on page one in July and then in the promised land of one, two or three, actually one and two in October. Uh, we also provide other digital marketing services. And for any of you that would like to connect with me, uh, and I would be absolutely delighted to assess your Google My Business page. You can either scan the QR code that's behind me or here. I'm sure Patrick will get all the information out. Um, and uh, Patrick, uh, I know you have this presentation deck. I don't know if you send that out to uh, participants or not, but a lot of ways to connect with me, but you can just take your phone and scan the QR code. And... Okay, ready well for done. any questions. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, I can make the uh, I can make the presentation available uh, for download uh, if folks are interested in that. So, uh, and if nothing else, um, I can add uh, Susan. And if this is okay, your contact information uh, in the uh, message I post on on Meetup. Absolutely, um, feel free. Uh, that includes a link to the uh, to the recording of today's session. So. Um, Susan, thank you so much for a really informative session. Um, it's a lot to, uh, this phrase is so overused, but it really is a lot to unpack, as it were, um, in terms of uh, all the different areas. But the core areas that you focused on um, are definitely um, 
folks, I think uh, things that folks should pay attention to. Um, I thought it was particularly insightful to learn about um, the seating, the Q&A uh, for your listing. So you don't, um, you know, you, like you said, all your questions that, you know, if it's an FAQ or actual common, actually truly frequently asked questions from your, from your clients and so forth, you can stick those out there. And it's not obvious to the world that you did that. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and then the other thing that, um, could you just, this is my question. Could you just refresh our, my memory and maybe for the rest of the audience, <clears throat> what a local citation is again? Yes. So um, when we, here, I, I'll share my screen one more time and we'll go back to uh, the search that we did for Orion Mortgage. And that's if I can find it. Yes. So local oh, right. citations are the weird name address phone directories that are online that Google pulls from um, to as part of the algorithm to serve up your business, a uh, business. And um, as part of our professional services, we make everything matchy matchy and populate the missing things. And then every couple of months we audit this because shocker, Google changes the sites and they don't tell anybody uh, that they pull from. Um, and so maybe you'll have, Google likes to be consistent. Uh, it wants to trust a business. It doesn't like to bump around. And so if everything isn't perfect, it just adds to um, Google's willingness to trust you, but that's what that is. Now, can you manage your own listing in these various sites? You could, but that's 50. Yeah. Plus. Right. It's a lot, yeah, it's a lot of places to maintain your stuff for sure. In addition to making the donuts. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. All right. Um, and then I also, the other really um, insightful piece that I, that I saw um, or that I heard, I'm sorry, is uh, in the reviews that you can go back and edit your responses and, and to, you know, be a little bit more keywordy as it were in your response. So that's, that's good stuff because um, that's how you get found. And yeah, as you said, Susan, we could do, uh, we could do a whole, you know, we could do it easily a two hour workshop on um, keywords and SEO and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, could you, um, what sort of, just for everyone's edification, what sort of SEO services does Encompass TV uh, offer? Uh, as, as a post to Google my business, are we talking about websites? Yeah, that kind of stuff. Do you do any of that kind of stuff? Yes. So one more time, I'll share the screen. I did, uh, go, Please. Uh, go through that pretty quickly. Um, but we do all of the things, almost all of the things. Um, so we do website development that in, includes, I hate to say encompasses, but there it is, <laughs> uh, search engine optimization and keywords. We do all of the research. Of course, Google My Business, social media management and advertising. And then we also do email marketing, reputation management and design services from banners to postcards to, uh, and of course the other side of the business, which is indoor billboards and full motion ads. Mm -hmm. Cool. So can Very I just good. ask a follow up on this then, um, Joyce here? So if you, do you ever do a la carte things? Like, would you ever do just a local citation? That's it? Or does it have to be wrapped into a larger package? Um, that's a great question. And I would be foolish to say, oh, no, Joyce, it's all or nothing. <laughs> I'm sure we could work something out. Okay, well, I'll follow up with you. Normally, uh, we do manage the local citations uh, as part of uh, Google My Business. I mean, I think that's what I would imagine, yeah. Okay. Cool, very good. Does anyone else have any other questions? Yeah. Um, uh, Susan, are you able to put any text in with the photos, ex explaining the photos or just 
adding information about the photos that you post? Uh, there is a caption area in the photos as well. I think there, I think it's only on mobile versus desktop, which infuriates me <laughs> because I like the big real estate <laughs> versus the little real estate. Um, I can't explain why Google does that, but yes, there is the ability to, to do captions. Okay. It was fascinating. I actually just went into the Google, my business page, the Orion Mortgage one, because most of the errors that you pulled up did not have Boulevard written out. It was BLVD with a comma. So I just changed the Google My Business address to match most of those. So maybe that'll make a difference. Well, there you go. And that is why I specifically asked for the address as it appears on Google My Business so I could do a good, good scan for you. Yeah, and I just copied and pasted it right off of that. Perfect, right. perfect. But, well, that's but good. Only place the only there you go. That Boulevard. So I maybe made a higher, le less high error rate. Good job. There we go. Thank you. Um, just uh, one last question, and I think we need to wrap it up. Um, and if folks need to drop, I totally understand. Um, uh, one, one last selfish question on my part. Um, are, do you, can you recommend any um, keyword research tools for yes. business owners? Uh, that's a great question. And I thought you might be asking it. So a free tool um, is a site called Uber Suggest by this SEO guru. And his name is Neil Patel. And he has like such domain authority that he's probably number one or number two, no matter what you put in. Um, and uh, that is a free tool to learn about keywords. He, he has a lot of training on how to use his free tool. Uh, and then there are other paid tools like SEM Rush and some yeah. things that are, you know, they're just paid tools. But I would say be prepared to get a lot of information from Neil Patel when you utilize this tool because you don't get to use it without surrendering. Can you put that in the chat real quick, Susan? Uh, if you don't mind, if you know the... Uh... Um, I would need to Google it and then oh, get Okay, it or maybe but... just spell his name. Yeah, because... sure, absolutely. Do that right now. Okay. What was the name of the site again, please? Uber Suggest. Uber Suggest. Okay. Here, I'm putting it in right now. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Great, and uh, I'll include that in the um, uh, in the meetup post. I'll give along. you a real URL when we're done. Perfect, yeah. Um, yeah, and I'll share that with the uh, over meetup uh, with, uh, with folks. So uh, you'll, you should get a notice uh, from meetup that says I posted something. And, uh, and if not, you can just check back on the link for today's session. But anyhow, um, thank you again so much um, just last of all, I'm going to, um, I'm going to share again really quick if I can. There we go. I think I'm sharing. Can you see, are you seeing a slide that says senior tech coffee schedule? Perfect. Um, just some upcoming dates. Uh, on April 21st, I have a guest, uh, Avi Roseman, who has uh, a product uh, from his company, Nucleus Care. It's basically a dedicated tablet for uh, communicating with older adults, uh, but also it uh, accepts data, collects data from things like um, smart blood pressure cuffs and things like that. So we're going to be talking about that. And we're, um, I think we're going to do a live demo with his mom, who is a 90 year old woman um, who lives nearby, but he's, she loves to be in the demos. So anyway, and then those are the dates for May. I haven't finalized the topics yet, but um, check back and uh, you'll get notice on uh, Meetup as well. Uh, or, and if you follow on my social media. Anyhow, thanks again. Uh, I really appreciate everyone joining today. And uh, Susan, thank you again so much. Thank for you your so time. much for having me. Such a pleasure. And uh, everyone have a wonderful day. Take care.